let's talk about Eamon O'Kane. Okay. Mm -hmm. He went into the camp. Um, yeah. How did that come about? Eamon was sparring with George when he was getting ready for, uh, I believe it was the De Gale camp. And we just got talking for five minutes. I gave him a little bit of advice. He heeded none of it. Um, and then uh, six months ago, or f five months ago, um, Francie, who I co-manage with Eamon now, called me up and said, look, Eamon wants to come over and work with you. Would you be interested? And I said, I'd send him over. Let's see how we get along together. And that was it. And we got along. After a couple of weeks, he bought into my outlook and the way things should be. We agreed with each other and uh, made a deal and moved on. What do you make out of Eamon as a boxer? And what's the <clears throat> uh, Downsides, too eager to be in a fight. Plus sides, doesn't mind being in a fight. You know, it's a, it's a fine line. You don't want to take away. I just want to rein it in a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much yet because we haven't even had our first fight together. That's going to happen on February 13th. He expects a lot from me. I expect a lot from him. He's already ranked. He was ranked number 10 in the IBF. We've, we're at number eight. Um, there's one or two of the guys busy above us. One of the other ones vacant. Um, who knows what's going to happen with Jermaine Taylor. So our goal is to have a couple of fights, improve our ranking in the IBF, and um, look to fight for that title. That would be the goal. Have you seen his last fight? From what, what I understand and what I've read, uh, it was a disappointing performance. Uh, yeah, uh, it was. I, I seen a couple of rounds of it, and I saw the fight before that where he stopped a guy in a round, and I thought that was a disappointing performance. And that's not a knock on him. It's just the things that he does, he is too eager be in a fight. A fight's going to break out sooner or later. You're in there with one other, one other man with gloves on. The fight's going to break out. But you need to control it when it breaks out. And he doesn't. The bell goes and that's it. It's a fight done. Draw a line and let's get to it. And I just want him to do it a little bit more measured. He's a top amateur. He's fought all of the, our top pros now when he was an amateur. Um, with varying degrees of success. Um, he beat George in the amateurs, he's fought to Gale, I think he's fought a few of the other guys, Andy Lee, you know, he's, he was up there at the top when those guys were too. He's, um, he's fresh, it's not like he's had a hard career. He's um, ranked number eight, he's in a good position. If we can bring the best out in each other, and uh, he buys into what I be believe he needs to do for improvements, and uh, I prove myself in making the right moves too. I think we can do something. But we both have a lot to prove. So February 13th is going to be when, uh, you know, we're in a tough fight. Um, and it's a fight that will probably end up being a real high activity fight. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's not just a, it's a fight where we're going to have to find, find our feet together while the fight's unfolding. But because he's ranked number eight in the world, we're not going to get the opportunity to have a couple of easy fights, you know, to get used to each other. We're going to have to find find out and get used to each other in the heat of the moment. So he's made quite a sacrifice as well, you know, mm. coming here, training in, in the week. Do you think that will, you know, encourage him to, to reach his potential? Well, I think we all need to make sacrifice. If we don't, you know, what are we really committing to? You know, we might make improvements, we might move forward, but <clears throat> sooner or later. Because the mentality is the, the most important thing, no matter what you're trying to achieve. If you're not making sacrifices, well, then you have, you don't know that you have that within you. When you're when you're when you're losing a fight, then you might have lost three, four rounds in a row. And say, for example, every man who ever fought Ben said he hits you and he hurts you with everything. Can you imagine being four rounds down, five rounds down, being hurt every time you get hit, and not be willing to make the sac sacrifice needed? to turn things around. So you gotta learn how to make sacrifices. You gotta learn how to deal with pressure and all these different things in different ways. The fact that he's willing to come away from home and train here every week and then go home on the weekends is showing that he's willing to give everything that it needs to be a success. So like I said, now I have to step up my end and give him the things that's required when he's here. So with the fact that he's willing to make a sacrifice, yeah. And so far, with the short period we've had working together, been impressed with what you've seen? I've been impressed because we've gradually made improvements. Um, 
first spar that he had here was the first week of sparring was very good because I put him in there with very inexperienced amateurs and told him you're not going to prove nothing controlling these guys so you know just use your jab just use defense nothing else I'm going to score it and how little you hit them just control them with your the timing of when you let a shot go using the jab using your feet so it was very he had to really underplay himself and not let the normal aiming out but then as soon as I took the reins off and put him in his first open spa, it all went hell for leather again. And it was just kill or be killed. And then he toned it down after, because it was a six round spa, after two, three rounds, toned it down and gave me a beautiful two, three rounds to finish. And ever since then, he's improved bit by bit by bit.